This video is brought to you by the award-winning prop firm, Fidel Chris. This is one that I picked up from Larry Williams. It's a simple daily bar strategy. He calls it a smash day. And how you look at a smash day is this bar here, for example, is a smash day. All right, folks, here we are on Trading Up. We've got Jared Goodwin in the house. We've just done a podcast. Go and check it out. It's underneath here. Uh, now, what we're going to do now is walk through a couple of strategies that Jared has developed. We're also going to see the backtest historical equity curves as to how these performed. And they are GJ strategies as well. So if you're on the Forex market, this is something you could potentially use yourself. So, Jared, welcome back to the show. Uh, let's share your screen I can. and get on with it. Okay, let me show you. Fidel Crest is an award-winning prop firm that funds traders with up to $2 million and offers generous profit splits up to 90%. So one thing that really sets Fidel Crest apart is their no minimum trading days requirement on their challenge and verification stages. On top of that, traders who successfully pass the challenge and verification stages are eligible to receive a bonus payout of up to 30K on top of their funded stage profit split payout on performance. And be sure to use promo code TRADINGNUT, all one word, to get 10% off your next challenge. Click the link in the description below or the card above to find out more. Okay, so hopefully you can see my screen. Um, hopefully you'll see three separate chart windows. Now, yeah. this is for, this is pound yen. Um, we're looking at a two hour chart. And in fact, both the strategies that I'm about to show you uh, are ones or variations of ones that I do trade live um, in my own in my own account as well. So they're pretty relevant. So the strategy on um, pound yen here is a trend following strategy. And it just takes breakouts um, and it takes breakouts um, of the highest highs and the lowest lows. So it's a trend following strategy. And I'll just show you, um, I run a quick optimization. Uh, we were talking earlier about be optimizing inputs. So we're going to talk about optimizing the length of the breakout because we could be looking at a 10 bar breakout or a 20 bar breakout, 50 bar breakout. How do we know? which breakout is the best one to use. So I'm just going to show you results of an optimization that I ran. And you'll see over on the right hand side here, I've got my entry length multiple. This is an input that I coded and I've just got one, two, three, and they're irrelevant to actual bar sizes. But I can tell you that number one is a 20 bar breakout. Number two is a 40 bar. Number three is an 80 bar. And looking at the net profit here, we can see that they're all profitable. That's the main thing. They're all profitable. But then you might ask, okay, so which one am I going to use? Um, we can see that using a 20 bar breakout, we're going to get much more trades because it happens much more often. Uh, we look at the percent profitability or the average trade value. So the, the question is, which one do we actually use? So I do a thing where I like to split my position into three parts. So rather than actually choose which of these ones I'm going to do, I trade them all. So I'll split my position uh, into thirds and I'll trade every one of those. And I'll just very quickly show you the equity curves of each one. So the equity curve we look at now is going to be trading a 20 bar breakout. And that's what the equity curve looks like going back to 2008. Let's look at uh, a 40 bar breakout. That's the 40 bar. And finally, the 80 bar breakout. So they're all equity curves moving in the right direction. But I don't know, you know next year which one's going to work best. So like I said, I'm going to trade them all. And I'll just demonstrate that. I've got them here in the uh, multi-charts portfolio trader. And I've added them all. And we're going to be trading a third of position on all of them. So I'll just show you the back test or the, the performance report. Looking at the equity curve, that's the equity curve trading them all. Um, in fact, it, it doesn't look too dissimilar to, to some of the individual equity curves, does, does it? But mm. that's, that's all of them. Um, so the thing is, we're looking at taking breakouts on a trending market. If we applied this same strategy to the likes of I don't know, pound dollar, it would look horrible because it's just that market doesn't work like that. So essentially look for a market, uh, look at the behavior of a market. I know from a lot of experience that pound yen is a trending market. 
So that's, um, and that was just a little demonstration of what I uh, regard as robustness. So the, the entry length, that, that bar length was the only input which I could actually change. I could have used five, I could use 25, but I tested them all. You didn't see that in that optimization, but I tested them all from probably five to a hundred and they were all profitable. So no matter which one I choose, hopefully they'd be profitable, but just to, to be safe, split the position into three and I chose three of them. And note how I picked, how I doubled every time. I doubled the length every time. I went 20, double it 40, double it to 80. Something I picked up from Perry Kaufman. And what about the uh, so, the, the exit for the, the strategy? What was the stop loss and the okay. take profit? Yeah, let's, let's go back to a chart and I'll show you that. So you'll see there is a stop loss there, but we rarely hit the stop loss. I've got 150 pip stop loss. So it's a simple 150 pip stop loss. But other than that, it's a stop and reverse strategy. And what that means is this trade here, for example, it broke the 20 day low or 20 bar low, sorry. And so we got in the trade and we didn't get out until we broke the 20 day high or 20 bar high. So when we break the 20 bar high, we exit the position we're in. So stop and reverse, and then we reverse the position and go long. So, I mean, these look fairly horrible trades. We scroll back a little bit. Um, so the, greens are, the green is, is a win and the red's a loss. That's yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're looking just to, just to ride the trends really. Um, we could, we could punctuate it. We could be taking some profit targets, but why try and why try and cut a trade short when it's trending? You mm. want to be catching as much of the trend as as you can. Mm. That's that's how I look mm. at it. Awesome, brilliant. Now let's have a look at the second uh, strategy. The second strategy, Larry, Larry Williams based. Yeah, this is one that I picked up from uh, Larry Williams. It's a simple um, daily bar strategy. Um, and it's probably quite hard to see. Um, he calls it uh, a smash day and <laughs> how you look at a smash day, um, is this bar here, for example, is a smash day. And what we're looking for is a close, which is lower than the prior day's low. Okay. And that's a smash bar. If we get that smash bar or a smash day, we want to go long, so we want to buy the next day if the price breaks above the high of this smash smash bar. And you can see you might be able to see a little blue arrow there where mm. where we went long. Um, there are I have got some another pretty straightforward filter, so I'm not taking every smash bar. Um, however, I do include this strategy in one of my programs, so I don't really want to say exactly what that is. Um, but and it's the opposite the short trades so for example here we got a close which was higher than the high of the previous bar and then if we get a break below the low of that smash bar then we go short and i'm just going to demonstrate at the moment um we've got an exit after eight days in the trade just an eight bar timed exit so for those of you who aren't algorithmic traders you might think you know well, that's a really crazy exit exit after certain amount of bars but with algorithmic trading strategies it it tends to work um so there's the equity curve of, of that that strategy is it um, and is that exit in profit or just exit regardless exit regardless just a right. purely timed exit after eight days after eight bars so yeah nice looking nice looking behavior on that i'll just show you to start let's uh, for the sake of the comparison I'm going to do, we're making 81,000 um, percent profitable, 61 percent average trade value of $516. That's, that's a large average trade. Now, uh, average bars in trade, you can see it's 8.9. So when I said eight days in the trade, that's eight full days in the trade. So we might be um, half a day in the trade when it begins, mm. then we want to see eight full days. Um, but, you know, six, eight, 10, 12, they're all going to work because this strategy is fairly robust. But I'm just going to quickly compare that to this strategy below here is exactly the same strategy. I've just changed the exit. So I'm not using that eight-day exit. Um, 
I'm using a bailout exit so or a first profitable close. So what that means is I've actually got a day delay of one. So what I'm saying is, and I'll show you an example on this trade here. So this trade here, we went long. I'm saying we want to be in the trade for at least one whole day. So that's the whole day. And then at the end of that day, the computer checks to see if we're in profit or not at the close. If we're in profit, now it could be $10 in profit or it could be $1,000 in profit. It doesn't matter in this case. If we're in profit, we exit the trade and we bail out and we take the profit. If we're not in profit, uh, then we keep the trade open. Look at this short trade here. So we've got in short, the next day at the close, we weren't in profit. Next day, we weren't in profit. Next day, we weren't in profit until finally, this bar here dropped right down. We were in profit and we exited the trade. And I'll show you the performance report. And when you now exit that trade, can I ask a question? When you exit that trade, uh, are you exiting right at the open of the next day or are you waiting until the spread dies down? Um, okay, so on that uh, on that chart you saw there, I purposely put it on the daily chart just to make it easy for us to see oh, the yeah. setup. But yeah. no, I don't. I typically will enter... Um, on that strategy, I think I think I actually end. I think I actually exit fifteen minutes before the day actually ends. Uh, okay, um, right. But it doesn't make much difference. You can either. I will typically enter at sixteen forty-five. We're talking Eastern Standard Time, so fifteen minutes before the market shuts, or it will be like eighteen thirty, like mm. an hour and a half after the market opens. Um, mm. Between those times, I don't trade because the spreads go wild. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just wanted to show you, um, look at, so the average trade value is obviously dropped because we're in trades less, we're only in trades for 4.4 days on average, but look at the percent profitable, 84% profitable. Um, and we're making far less net profit because we're not in the trade long enough, but um, that's the long only, that's the short only. That's the combined equity curve. Again, a nice consistent equity curve um, for someone who likes to have a, a high winning percentage, um, that's that's a way of, you know, adjusting. Just adjusting the exits on these strategies can work really well. Um, and I trade uh, variations of this. And again, I'll trade. Um, I won't treat it as a completely separate strategy. So I'll divide some allocated capital into portions and trade it um, a portion with a quick exit, portion with a, a longer exit, etc. And what about the stop loss? How did you come up with the 150 pip stop loss? Okay, so stop, stop losses are purely an optimization. Um, on, on this strategy you see in front of us, it's 250. Um, it was 150 on the, uh, the pound yen strategy, but they are purely um, an optimization. Um, I Most of the time, in fact, 95% of the time, my strategies have uh, what I call dollar stop losses or pip stop losses. So they're 200 pips or 150 pips. Um, I rarely use anything else. I rarely use um, support resistance or whatever um, a discretionary trader might use. Um, but yeah, they're always a dollar stop loss. Again, I know I keep going on about something I learned from Larry Williams um, in, in the decades of testing that he done. He'll often say, dollar stop losses just tend to work um, and they do um, the mm. testing proves it so so what I'll do cam is I'll run an optimization and what that means is I'll get the software to do some tests and I might test in on this strategy it'll probably be in 20 maybe 25 pip uh, steps or increments so I'll test from let's say 25 pips through to 500 pips so I'll go 25 50, 75, 100, right the way through to 500. And you'll see a lot of the times you might see like a bell curve. You'll see like a bit of a sweet spot um, around a certain area. And I don't always pick the best stop loss in terms of net profit, but I'll, I'll just pick a, a stable area. Um, I, don't, I, gen, I don't generally use stop losses that much to get out of positions. So uh, they're there mostly for, position sizing purposes. 
All right, folks, I'm here at Black Bull Markets headquarters in Auckland, New Zealand. You can see this amazing view behind me of Auckland Harbour. Now, talking about views, if you do want to get free TradingView Pro, then you, all you need to do is trade one lot a month at Black Bull Markets, and they're going to give you free TradingView Pro. So, folks, to find out more, click the link in the description below or the card above. Brilliant. Well, look, um, Jared, thank you for sharing those two strategies. That's fantastic. I'm sure the guys can dive in and have a look at those in a bit more detail. Now, uh, before we wrap up, what's the best way for traders to get hold of you? Um, you can get hold of me um, at the transparenttrader.com. But if you want to see more of what I do, then just go to my YouTube channel. Just search The Transparent Trader or Jared Goodwin on YouTube and you'll find me all over the place. Brilliant. Well, look, folks, do remember we did do a podcast. Go and check it out. Link under the video here. And also, whilst you're down there, click like, subscribe, and that notifications bell, and click all so you don't miss any videos like this in the future. All right, thanks thanks for watching, folks, and we'll see you in the next one. Tired of missing trades or spending hours at the charts? Introducing my Robot Builders Club. With our platform, you can build bots in minutes, not weeks, without any coding required. Get lifetime access to my video course, VIP community, and over 40 ready-made robots. Works with MT4 or MT5, and as a bonus, you'll get three months access to my Robot Lab, where we build and test bots on live calls every week. Join the hundreds of traders who are trading smarter, not harder. Click the link in the description to learn more, get the free training, and download a free robot.